talking about food there's been interesting sort of discourse taking place on social over the last what past couple of days i feel like where tons of americans have been kind of like you know lending their ear in and sharing their opinions on how overrated they think european food is which is pretty interesting especially when you think of stuff like italian food specifically and mediterranean food overall and this um one lady actually spoke about her journey i think she went to greece if i'm not mistaken and how somehow going to greece and eating mainly pasta and bread she was still able to kind of come back home and you know check the scales and find out she lost weight and that she didn't feel bloated any kind of skin conditioning she had that kind of was kind of sparked because of eating too many carbohydrates didn't happen and this kind of sparked a whole different conversation around the ingredients and the food health and the food safety laws over there in america which are pretty crazy and um, which kind of mean that you can't really get the fresh produce and ingredients that you would need to kind of eat the way people eat here in europe because of the rules that they have in place for certain bits of food but i'm going to play the video only of the girl talking so you can kind of hear what she had to say about the whole situation then i'm going to give you my two pence talk about the differences between european food and food found in the u.s i ate everything that i wanted i stayed full the whole time and my skin did not break out i did not have any stomach issues i ate dairy actual dairy not soy milk almond milk oat milk or anything like that actual milk from a cow and my skin did not break out there's no yellow cheeses like all the cheese flavors are all white <laughs> there's bread with every meal there's pasta all the time and i ate it and i'm fine anytime i did not finish my food they asked me if i was okay or if i just didn't like it they were feeding me so much and everything was always fresh like there was no microwaves anywhere i was so sure that i had gained weight on this trip when i got home i lost four pounds i love it here quite crazy right imagine going to holiday and eating a spread that looks like what we have here on screen pasta crab um you know pasta bread <laughs> more bread and cheese and shit and you somehow come back home and you've lost weight and it kind of reminds me of the time that i went to new york and one of the kind of startling things for me most of all was the fact that the chocolate was really bad the chocolate tasted so chemically so sugary it kind of blew my mind because i don't know why in my head i kind of had this idea that american chocolate will be far better that you have way more options out there or whatnot and i just kind of you know had it on the real sort of heady high heady sort of position and when i go out there i'm like wow our dairy milk bars here are way better than what you have over there and then the other thing that really kind of disturbed me was the bread i remember the bread just tasting so much like sugar to the point where i was thinking why does all the bread in america taste like a croissant i couldn't understand why that was um but then of course over time when you start reading issues around food food health safety laws and stuff in america and then you remember what happened with um what's it called subway and the issues they were having in terms of how they deemed a, a, a particular sub i think it might be like a tuna sub had to have only a certain amount of tuna in it to be declared declared tuna something like in a low 20 percentile then you think to yourself wow it's definitely must be difficult to kind of get a real good quality food out there and then i also remember there was a other thing as well that I was remember being a big issue, this kind of idea of food deserts, which we kind of have here in the UK to a certain extent, but this kind of thing that you see quite often in the States, especially in places like America, where there are no kind of local supermarkets or whatnot, or kind of fresh, you know, food produce places that you can go and get food. So all your food that you kind of eat in day to day has to be purchased from a local bodega, which number one is going to cost way more. And it's also not going to be the freshest stuff because, you know, it just isn't. And, um, it kind of really surprised me why that was kind of a normal thing where you had, to, you had to travel so far out to go and get kind of fresh produce and maybe sometimes it was kind of just you know way outside your kind of budget to kind of spend on a weekly shop whereas i think in the uk we're kind of spoiled even though i think in general the food prices maybe per basket are definitely higher here because the cost of living is super high but you can still for the most for the most part in most areas of london there's going to be at least five or more kind of butchers um local kind of vegetable places that you could go and grab some you know greens and whatnot for your food the supermarkets and stuff at least one or two within like a 20 minute kind of radius that you can kind of check out so you're not always having to depend on buying your flipping food for your kind of weekly food and shopping and whatnot from a bodega which to me sounds legitimately insane but then off the back of this debate off the back of this debate around oh is european food over is european food um better than american food there's a whole entire debate happening now regarding american people specifically african americans complaining that the seasoning in europe isn't great or the food in general is overrated which is a real real crazy hot take because 
one thing is for certain, I think most people, even if you're not a foodie, you can definitely say that whether it's Mexican food in America, whether it's Italian food, Chinese food, whatever it may be, you're definitely not getting the authentic experience. You're getting like an Americanized version of it because, you know, if you open a restaurant and you have a lot of American people around you, you're not going to make the stuff that you cook traditionally at home or they eat at home. You're going to try to appeal to a general consumer and to a wider audience as much, as much as possible. So you're going to add and do things that you probably wouldn't do things at home or back home to kind of make it more palatable but to kind of take that experience of having a version of you know american italian food and think that is what italian food actually looks and tastes like is quite insane and also to not kind of uh, enjoy both things because i think you can enjoy both you can enjoy the american version of italian food and you also can enjoy the simplicity of the flipping um, European um, version of Italian food, but there are some Americans who just don't understand it or they went to Italy specifically with the mindset that they're going to have the same culinary experience that they have here in the store, they have over there in the US that they have when they go over to Europe, which obviously wasn't the case. So this is a TikTok video taken from a particular gentleman who went to Italy recently and was not very pleased with the quality of Italian food over there. Italian food is the blandest, food i have ever had in my life see eh? if you're going make sure you carry your maggi cube carry crayfish any seasoning that you like in your cabinet take it with you imagine going to an italian restaurant in italy right in i think this might be like venice or something and carrying seasoning cubes with you or like salt and pepper or like sriracha like your fucking hillary clinton and trying to douse your food over like imagine the looks you're gonna get from the waiters over there a part of me kind of likes the confidence that american people have in general i literally love the confidence i love the flipping the confidence of saying nah your food fucking sucks our food is way better. I want my shit covered in yellow cheese. I want cheese all over it. I want it drowned in fucking sauces. I don't give a fuck. I kind of like that. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like that pure, pure confidence of it. It's absolutely insane, but I love it. Because they don't, they don't season it. Eh? They'll be coming here and be doing mamma mia. They'll be doing no risotto. It's not, it's not, there's nothing inside. It's just rice. It's just cream. There's not take everything all the season if i had known why are people saying this guy is not american he is american just because he's got a nigerian accent why can't he be an american are we gonna have that debate eh are we gonna start having that debate what is an american to you <laughs> he's speaking english to me he sounds very african-american to me what do you guys think eh let's start having that debate who is an american what are these words this is what i would have done eh all these one videos you're seeing me eating i'm struggling I'm struggling to get this food down because if not, I would have died. I would have died of starvation. Yeah, I find that legitimately insane that you can legitimately go to Italy <laughs> with the idea that you're going to get the same Italian experience that you have in America over there and be upset that the food is somewhat plain because part of the beauty of eating in these type of places is the simplicity of it. And the fact that the produce itself is allowed to kind of breathe and to kind of, you know, so you can kind of taste the actual flavoring of the meat or whatever it is that you're eating. But then to go there thinking, nah, this isn't enough. I need to drown it. I need to drench it. Why do I need to drench it in sauce or butter or whatever it may be, or juice or cream, cream, whatever it may be, is legitimately wild. But like I said, a part of me loves the confidence. A part of me loves the confidence that some people have in kind of deciding, nah, I don't care what everyone else says, that this is better culturally, that this kind of makes you a little bit look a little bit more sophisticated. This is just not for me. They want their restaurants covered in neon lights. They want really loud hip hop playing through the speakers. They want um, sparkles in their drinks. They want gold covered hot wings. They want pasta covered with cheese. They want cakes that explode with chocolate. Like all that sort of shit to them is like, that's fine dining. I love that confidence. That to, to say that now, I don't care what you're going to give me, a real plain risotto, whatever it may be, that is not tasty to me. I want my stuff covered in yellow cheese. I want it flamed. I want it burned. I want it tossed. I want it jacked up, jacked down before I can think it's good food. Or, or 
as this guy says, I'm going to carry a couple Maggie cubes in my flipping bag, like some dice and sprinkle them on top of the food wherever I go to kind of add a little bit or whatever I need to add onto it. Absolutely crazy. But you got to love it. You got to love it. That in, that confidence is what basically makes America kind of one of the best countries out there in the world, isn't it? Because some people over there legitimately think the world <laughs> revolves around them and they're not joking. They legitimately think that. And it's kind of admirable to have that level of confidence despite the evidence being the contrary you know i kind of like it i'm not gonna lie i kind of like that kind of level of confidence <laughs>